The 1980s ushered in an explosion of cultural, political, and scientific innovation. The world was changing at rapid speed, as many industries were taking new risks and attempting revolution. The growing pharmaceutical marketplace was left disjointed and unresponsive to new trends. Very few had heard of a generic drug, let alone a managed pharmacy benefit. In 1988, eight pharmacists came together with a vision to take action. There wasn't an organization that represented managed care pharmacy at the time. And some of us started meeting at the other pharmacy meetings. And we got together and they became more and more of us. And pretty soon we realized there was an opportunity and an interest. We wanted um, some sort of an organization that could uh, represent our individual HMO pharmacy needs. It was a small group, but they had the guts to stand up and say, we need to turn this into something else. These eight pioneers created a home for like-minded pharmacists. And like many of the great startups, the Academy was headquartered in a garage in California. The, the garage uh, was Perry Cohen's garage, and he was the treasurer. You know, we were just managed care pharmacists. We didn't really know how to start an organization. This was an organization back then that everything was done by the membership. Just before the meeting started, we realized we need papers of incorporation. So I knew a, a man who was the executive director of a, of a waterbed association in California. And I used his bylaws and I changed the names and adapted them to uh, managed care pharmacy. AMCP had its official launch at the 1988 fall meeting of the American Society of Hospital Pharmacists in Nashville, Tennessee. Attendance totaled 135, with 50 people joining AMCP on the spot. When the meeting started, we walked in the room and we said, my God, there's people who actually came to this thing. And so it kind of hit us then that maybe this thing is for real. And it was a unanimous excitement that here we were pharmacists practicing in a new area. After Nashville, things skyrocketed for the Young Academy. Membership surged from 50 to 500 in two years and grew exponentially after that. Today, membership tops 7,000 members. So our organization was growing leaps and bounds because the need for PBMs was growing leaps and bounds. It was significantly different from the other major pharmacist associations, both in its focus, its purpose, but also in the kind of educational programs. You could go to AMCP as a pharmacist and get the answers. You couldn't do that with some of the other professional pharmacy organizations. In 1991, William Tyndall became the association's first executive director. And in 1995, Judy Cahill joined the team. AMCP began to transform from an educational resource to an industry leader. In 2011, the Academy appointed Edith Rosado as its newest CEO. 25 years ago, AMCP was responding to a small need. Uh, now, uh, we're innovating and leading. We don't just take care of 2,000 people like a normal pharmacy might or pharmacist behind the counter. We take care of millions, hundreds of millions of lives, and we try to do it in a way that they don't even know we're working on their benefit, but we're helping them achieve better outcomes. Through this leadership, the Academy has had a significant hand in virtually every important piece of pharmaceutical legislation of the last two decades. When Washington wants to know what's going on in managed care pharmacy, or even pharmacy in general, uh, folks on Capitol Hill, they will often call AMCP. But AMCP has never been one to rest on its laurels. It is constantly striving to reinvent itself to meet the challenges and opportunities of the day. Nowhere is that more evident than in the work it does grooming the next generation of managed care pharmacy leaders. The student membership is a large part of the academy, and to me that is a sign of tremendous, tremendous success. It's a very nurturing environment. Just from my perspective as a student pharmacist committee chair, I was embraced and my ideas were acknowledged and you know I was allowed to speak at the table. Talking to those practitioners in the field, getting as much knowledge as we can to be able to progress AMCP in the future. Founded through innovation and held together by community, AMCP will continue to lead the industry into the future. Will the academy we have today be the same academy we have in 25 years? Absolutely not. It's not the one we had five years ago, or 10 years ago, or 15 years ago, because we're always evolving. And now we're expanding out, not to just pharmacists, but to nurses and to physicians who are also working in our companies. I'm not sure I can see where it's all going to lead, except that pharmacy will be the center of patient care delivery in a way we haven't been in the past.
We had a lot of fun, gave the, the organization up and running. We learned a lot in the process, made lots of good friends, a few enemies along the way maybe. It was just a very rewarding experience. Transforming from an idea in a California garage to a dynamic leader in the healthcare industry, AMCP continues to grow and progress. You can be proud of your AMCP today and tomorrow as we reach for the gold over the next 25 years.